Hello and welcome to the second episode of our 1 to 7 second scale Spitfire build. Today we are going to assemble the model, so let's get started. First I'm going to attach the seat to the cockpit floor. The fit between those two parts is good and very secure. Next task is to attach the lap belts. The left one is pretty simple and needs to be super glued to the seat. The right one needs to get through a slit in the seat and then super glued to the side. After this is done, both belts can be bent and super glued to the seat in their final position. The next step is to glue the cockpit floor to the left side wall, using the slower setting Mr. Cement Deluxe. Next, I added the control stick and the rear bulkhead. To reinforce them, I applied some Mr. Cement S. Then I super glued the compass in its cradle and the instrument panel assembly was ready to join the side wall. However, it was a bit harder than it looks on the instructions and I had to separate the cockpit floor from the side wall a little bit. Apart from this, the fit was good. Next, I added the right side wall. The bulkheads needed some realignment, but nothing major. With the pedals attached in position, I can move on to gluing the cockpit assembly to the left fuselage half. Here, I should have masked the contact area before painting for better adhesion. Not doing so did not cause any issues this time, but it is a good practice and it's worth doing. As previously, I used slower cement for the initial positioning and then Mr. Cement Test to reinforce the joint. I attach the remaining bulkheads and reinforcement panels and move on to attach the rest of the seat belts. The instructions suggest to glue the first set of belts over and behind the backrest. Then the second set in the opening of the armor plate. I however think that the belts are mounted on the rear bulkhead and did just that. And it is not just my opinion but the references as well. So sorry Edward, but you're wrong I'm afraid. Anyhow, I tried to give the seat belts some more realistic appearance, bending them here and there, but that's never easy with photo seat seatbelts. The only panel left is the nose plate for lack of a better term. And then the fuselage halves can come together, and they do that very well. Considering what a complex subassembly the cockpit is, I expected some alignment related issues but not this time, the fuselage halves perfectly hug the cockpit and join in one piece. That's great, I love when basic assembly is effortless. For some reason, the front portions of the wing root fairings are rendered as separate pieces. Fortunately, that's not an issue as they fit perfectly. I don't understand why the top of the engine cowling needs to be in two pieces only to introduce a unnecessary seam line. Just hope that this has more to do with manufacturing limitations rather than with resin part sales, let's say. Anyways, after sanding, scraping and whatnot, the fuselage is going to take a break while we deal with the wings. The overall great impression from the kit continues to the wing area. The central spar gives the lower wing great rigidity and also is a part of both wheel wells. The rest of the wells is made of several pieces which get together surprisingly easy and provide pretty good joints. Some caution and adjustment is necessary in order to get a good transition between all those separate pieces, but it is a good design in my opinion. After spending some time on a wing light, it is time to get the complete wing assembly together. Actually not the entire thing as I will mount the wing tips and the ailerons a little bit later. In order to install the fuselage inside the wing assembly, it is necessary to open up the wings just a little bit, just enough so that the fuselage can get in. When the wings are released, the gap in the wing root section becomes almost perfect panel line. That has to be one of the easiest wing root area joints I have ever encountered. After applying some Mr. Cement, I clamped the area for good measure. Just like any or most other kits, the leading edges need some cleanup. What is not so common is that the trailing edges need no work whatsoever. Partially because the ailerons are molded in one piece and also because Edward cleverly facilitated the flaps 
to hide the rest of the trailing edge seam. Fun fact, there are a gazillion wingtips on the spruce. Only for the marking options this release provides, we can choose between three different types of wingtips. The tailplane snaps into position very nicely and there is almost no play in the joint. The chin intake detail is also split in half. Here, unlike the top of the cowling, there is a good reason for that. And the reason is the two photo edge pieces that have to fit inside the intake. I was pleasantly surprised by how well those small details fit inside the opening. The chin also fits nicely in its place. Gluing and all should be done carefully because the joint is an actual panel line and needs to remain. In case you have issues with such areas, I can recommend my panel line scribing tutorial, where you can find a lot of tips on various panel line related issues. Link is in the description. For the underwing coolers assembly, I use their slots in the wings as jigs, as they are made of too many parts and I was concerned about the proper alignment. I however did not glue them in place as I wanted to have a good access for painting later on. The kit gives the freedom to position the cooler doors as we like, so I opted for the wide open setting. With all the major assembly completed, I went ahead and applied some Mr. Surfacer 500 in the gaps. I chose to use this primer as a filler because I think it performs better than regular filler when we have very fine gaps to fill. After some sanding and cleaning, it's time to attach the fiddly bits, like the fuel tank cap, some sort of antenna mass around, the tail wheel and those lovely thin bay doors. Also, let's not forget about the guns, cannons or whatever they are called, cause what is a fighter airplane without some firepower? Whilst I am not going to attach the gear legs at this point, they need to have the oil mechanism so I glued that in place and then super glued the gear legs to some handles for easier painting. I also did my usual acetate sheet gun size reflector replacement to complete the cockpit. The pre-cut canopy masks are very welcome addition to the profi pack kits. I have had issues with poor fitment of Edward masks, but never on one of their own kits, so here they work brilliantly. Some masking fluid is required to complete the masking of the sliding portion of the canopy, but that's easy enough to do. Another important and great aspect of this kit is that the clear parts fit perfectly on the fuselage. I don't know many things that are more frustrating than poorly fitting clear parts. And with all that done it's time to prep the model for painting. Join me again next week where we will paint, weather and actually finish this model. Thank you for watching and until next time, happy modeling!